Now part C. Um, this is we needed to show that if you know we're showing that H normal implies that HK is a subgroup. Um, and so what we can do here, so we'll we'll do we'll do a coset argument. So um, let's take a look at the set HK. Well, that one way of thinking about this is this is a union of the sets H times little k for k in k, uh, k, big k, little k and big k. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that this set happens to be a union of cosets. That's what I'm really using here. I wanna, I wanna, the cosets of a normal subgroup are nice because of things we proved earlier. And I want to just reframe this in terms of cosets of this normal subgroup H. So I write this set as a union of a bunch of, well, in this case, they are right cosets. Um, and then KH will be a union, uh, similarly, of left cosets. A little K here again. Um, and so because H is normal, for all K, H normal, this is the same thing as saying for all K, KH equals H K. Um, so this part is interchangeable. So the conclusion is that HK equals KH. Now, um, we want to use this um, to show that, um, we want to use this to show the group axioms. So we're proving that this is a subgroup, so we don't need to show associativity because it's a subset. We well, we know that the identity is in this because you can just choose the identity in H and in K. So really what we need to show is closure and um, inverses. And so because we have this here, we can show both of them. So closure. Uh, so the way closure will work is, you know, we'll take the set HK, HK. So any possible product of two elements in HK. Uh, we wrote it in the product set notation. Uh, we notice this is right here, and that's equal to um, H, H, K, K. And then the, this will be equal to H by closure of H. This will be equal to K by closure of K. So that'll be equal to H, K. Um, and so that's one way of showing closure. Uh, and of course, we could write this out in terms of elements. We'd just be unpacking the definitions of each of these in the terms of the products of sets. But um, maybe we, maybe I won't write that out. Um, now, our so we've shown closure. Now we need to show inverses. So we'll show inverses by going with, um, so if we have something that's of the form HK, what will its inverse be? Well, that'll be uh, K inverse H inverse. And so we want to show that K inverse H inverse is this in HK. Well, we, we we can't see immediately that it's in HK, but it is definitely it's in KH. It's totally in H KH, right? Because K inverse is in K and H inverse is in H. So um, 
So it's in kh, but that is hk. So um, we actually we actually do have this. So that's a check. So that'll show C. And then finally, we're putting it all together. D had we wanted to show that it, f was an isomorphism, and we had that um, was equivalent to h inverse k being the identity. Uh, we had h k being g, and we had um, this this fact that uh, both h and k are normal subgroups of g. Um, so I'll I'll say like this direction is um, is is this is I guess the easy direction because if f is an isomorphism, you know then g is isomorphic to h cross k, and you can uh, you can show all of these things just by the product properties of the product group. So show uh, for h cross k, and I'll say that's an exercise. So let's do the slightly harder direction. So by part a, this is what it means to be injective. So f is injective. Uh, maybe, maybe I should name these. Conditions. I'll call them one, two, and three. Uh, so f is injective by one, and then and then I can write this as you need to show one, two, three for the group H cross K. So f is injective by one, uh, and f is surjective by 2. OK. Uh, and then we need to show that f is a homomorphism. Um, so that'll take a little work. Um, but since before, what we need to show, so by part b, uh, I guess I should say part b. Um, so what did part b say? We need to show that elements of H and K commute. And so what we'll do is we're gonna do we're gonna do a, a funny maybe a funny trick that's similar to what we did in one of the, one of the directions of part A. So we'll write down um, we'll write down so we want to show that hk equals kh. Uh, so we'll multiply, you know, um, and and we'll consider the element hk h inverse k inverse, right? So that's multiplying on the left by h inverse, then on the left by k inverse, uh, and we want to show does this equal one? So we need to show this. So now we need to show this. And so what we'll see is that this, this part right there, that's in k. And this part right here, that's in h. And or is that? Well, wait, I did this wrong. So a normal subgroup means that when we conjugate by something, it remains in the subgroup. So if I have something that's in H, I conjugate it by something in the big group that remains in H. Um, and then likewise, if I conjugate the element K by something in H, or honestly anything in G, that remains in K. So what we have is, um, something in this in the pink stuff so the pink stuff is in h 
and then this element little h is definitely an h. So we conclude uh, that h k h inverse k inverse is in h. Um, and from the from the orange, we see that this part is in k, uh, but also k inverse is in k by the inverses axiom. So then it's also in k, so it's in the intersection. Well, but that's equal to the identity. So um, the final conclusion is that h uh, h k h inverse k inverse equals the identity. Um, and so that shows that they commute. Um, and that shows that this is a homomorphism. So it's an injective, surjective, so it's a bijective homomorphism, thus an isomorphism.